the uh, record reflect we are back in session. We invite the council are present, all members of our jury are present, our witnesses back on the witness stand. I apologize for the delay in getting started this afternoon. It was my fault this time. Uh, I'm dealing with a family medical issue uh, that's taking some time. So I thought I could get everything done by two, but it uh, didn't work out that way. So I apologize for that. But we are here now, and uh, Mr. Lane, you may resume your examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. So um, going on to the uh, next topic that I was going to cover is this issue of Mr. Lissio, who testified that the uh, side light that you referred to in the Mitchley video, uh, he said that he didn't give an opinion that it was a reflection, but he said that it could be a reflection. Um, do you recall that testimony? I do. Okay. Um, did you, were you asked to do a supplemental report in that regard? are part of your supplemental report? Yes, yes I was. Okay. And what uh, specifically did you do to um, either confirm or uh, deny that? Uh, well, a couple, a couple of things. One is <clears throat> that I examined the Channel 7 video that's on the end of the Mishley house, and the truck drives directly by that camera view on the street. And then... Um, did a side-by-side -side video so you can see the truck drive by the Channel 7 and then in, into and through the Midgley video. And, and, and in, that, uh, in that presentation, you actually used some specific uh, software so that you can better show the jury, is that correct? I'm using Quick, quick Time because I can go frame by frame or at any speed that I want. Okay, and you. Uh, can you uh, describe to the jury what is the difference between a light and a reflection? Well, a light is something that exists, it's really there, and a reflection is from light that's transmitted to a, a surface that reflects it back. Okay. And does a reflection require a light source? It does. Okay. Um, and if uh, you want to go ahead, if uh, uh, we can just dim the lights a little bit, and then we can have a better view, and if you, as you go along, if you could just describe sure. either orally or with your uh, pointer, that'd be great. Okay. What I'm going to do first is just play it through. Now this is still the Mitchley video that we're looking at. Correct. Right? On, the, on the right, the other one is Channel 7 video on the end of the Mitchley house. <coughs> okay, um, but it's still part of the right. Mitchley video, just from a different angle or camera. Or yeah, the Mitchley video system. Right. Right. Okay. Now, as we see the lights coming on both camera views, and now we see the headlight of the vehicle, and here we see both headlights. This is this the vehicle is pretty high up in the, in the camera view frame here. Now, just if you can give the jury some orientation as to the location of the camera on the left, which you refer to as the channel seven. Yes, it's on the, the end of the Mixley house and looks straight out onto the street. If I'm facing the house, would it be on the right side of the house or the left side? Right side. On the right side. Okay. If I'm facing the street, it would be on the left side. Correct. Okay. And um, this is, just to be clear, this is running simultaneous? Yes. Okay. They're, they're at the same time because there's no exact sync point. Um, it's not like we see the light in it lined up with being within a certain reference, but you see both of them progressing at the same time. Okay. Okay, I'll go through it and I'll come back. There's the light. I'll stop it so that we go through it real slow. Can we dim the lights a little bit more? Maybe a lot more? Not the best that we can do. Uh, that should be better. the video, the headlight, and here's the headlight in the Channel 7 video. As they both move through respective camera views. Now you'll see the, head, the headlight and it disappear behind the side of the house. And then 
then you will see the side light up here. There it is up in the top of the frame. As it moves, you can see it better and better. And it's over here on the Mitchley. And the closer the camera gets, the brighter it gets. <coughs> Now, from the Channel 7 side, you saw that the light moved through uh, the frames. Uh, there was no gap in the light, correct? The light no, was constant. No, constant. Okay. Also, if you could speak up. I'm sorry, yes. From the time it goes into the view until the time it leaves the view, it's constant. I'll go back and do that a few more times. Here we have it on the Ashley video side. Okay, here it is again. I'll do it one more time. <coughs> okay. 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 Um, so, uh, from the, actually from both uh, sides, we see that that side light remains a constant as it moves through the frames. Is that correct? That's correct. So, what is significant about the fact that it's constant and it's uh, illuminating the whole time? Well, that would be a strong indicator that it's actually part of the vehicle, that it's going continuously, consistently, not a part of not a reflection because a reflection wouldn't move with the vehicle consistently, which it does in both camera views. And in order for there to be a reflection, there has to be a light source that's transmitting light to a reflective surface. So in this, there's a couple things I want to ask you. Number one, if, a, if an object passes through a light source and it reflects, there'll be a, for lack of a better word, a flash, correct? A momentary uh, uh, illumination, let's put it that way. Yes, right. And then when the lights, when it passes through the, and the light source is no longer fixated on that, there's no more illumination. Correct. Okay. So it would be a blip of a light and then it would be gone. Right. Okay. If you had a, if you had a light or an illumination that continued as we saw here, the light source would have to follow it and move itself. Is that correct? Exactly. Precisely. It would have to follow it precisely. Okay. And there, as you pointed out, there is no light source to either do it momentarily or to be constant, correct? Correct. Okay. And therefore, do you have an opinion as to whether this was a light or a reflection? A light. Okay. So, What did you understand Mr. Lissio's testimony to be as to whether or not it could be considered even <coughs> possibly a reflection? Objection, relevance, based the province and the jury. Being as for speculation. Were you, were, did you understand what Mr. Lissio's uh, reasoning was or what he relied on to say it was potentially a uh, reflection. Same objection. Overruled the answer. Yes, he said he his primary um, reasoning was that it lined up almost exactly with a <coughs> latch on the side door of the of the truck of the um, merit truck in the video that he superimposed in the video, um, but that's not correct. 
Okay, and why is it that not correct? Well, that, we got an exhibit that will demonstrate that clearly. Okay, now, if that latch was the recipient of a light source of some sort, um, would, it, would that light source also hit other parts of the vehicle? It certainly would. Okay. Did you see any of that? No. Okay. No. Um, so we're looking at, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to switch you out, okay? but I want to get a, a better photo. Which one you want? Yeah, I don't get far. No word section. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, guys. You were just on it. I was? Go to the left, on the bottom down there, bottom right. Right here? To the left. This one? This one. That one. Bingo. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is this the? Uh, okay. So this we're looking at exhibit one zero nine four. I think we want to go back one more. One more. What was that exhibit? Exhibit one zero nine three. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, what are we looking at here? This is an exhibit from Mr. Lesquio's report, and he's placed the model of the truck formerly owned. By Mr. Merritt. Objection. That misstates the evidence that it's from his report. From his, his exhibit. It's from his, from his, what he created and showed to the jury. All right. Oh. And we have this truck, which you see all of it, in a place that you never see that view or that perspective or those details of the vehicle from the Mitchley video. And it's, it, it, Kind of is misleading because it says, well, here's the car, the vehicle was in the midst of the vehicle. Objection. That's argumentative and mischaracterizes Lysio's testimony and invades the province of the jury. Move to strike. Overruled the answer. So let me ask you this. The, the actual image there, that, is it your understanding that that image was created uh, from uh, somebody doing a thorough scan? Yes. Okay. So what has occurred is that somebody did a ferro scan of Mr. Merritt's truck. Jackson Lee. Correct. Sustained. What do you, how do you understand that that uh, image uh, appeared there? That this is from a ferro scan, and then it was placed in in the, in the street park where you see it. Does that ferro scan uh, uh, created image have anything to do with the vehicle seen in the Mitchley video? No, you never see this view. You never see this complete picture of the vehicle in the Mitchell video. Objection. Mischaracterized and misstates Mr. Lysio's testimony. Overruled. So I'm going to go to the next uh, slide. And what are we looking at here? We have another, another um, slide from the frame from the Mitchell video where the model of the truck formerly owned by Mr. Merritt has been placed in this location. 
And did Mr. Did Mr. Lissio, in his presentation to the jury, explain to, as far as you know, why did he put, or why did, he, what was the purpose of placing the ferro scanned image of Mr. Merritt's truck in that location? I believe it was just for demonstration purposes of, of his process that he was going through. Okay. Objection. Lacks foundation misstates Mr. Lessio's testimony. Objection sustained is called for speculation and conclusion. The last answer is stricken. Jury is instructed to disregard it. <clears throat> Again, do you see this when you look at the actual Mitchley video? Do you see this anywhere in the Mitchley video? You do not. What are we looking at here? This is exhibit 1095. Again, we have the ferro scan model. Well, what, are we looking at Mr. Lissio's presentation to the jury? Yes. Okay. And what specifically is in this? Well, we have the, the ferro scan model of Mr. Merritt's truck, but we don't ever see that view or that completeness in the Mitchley video of the truck that goes by. In your opinion, is there any reason to place a ferro scanned image in this location at all? No. <coughs> now, exhibit 1096. Exhibit. Uh, Go ahead. What are we looking at here? We're looking at the ferro scan in another location superimposed over the, video, the image. Um, from the Mitchley video. Now, is this location of the vehicle anywhere close to where Mr. Lissio placed the ferro scan image of Merritt's truck? Uh, is this anywhere uh, uh, located in the actual Mitchley video? I believe he is trying to to show that that, that is an overlay over the truck in the Mitchley video. Objection, okay. speculation. Sustained. Move to strike. Again, uh, jury's instructed disregard the last answer. I think it'll make itself apparent in the future. Objection. Okay. Move to strike. Another Sustained. question pending. Uh, just wait for the next question. 1097, what are we looking at here? You are looking at the illumination on the side of the vehicle in the Mitchley video. And this is actually from Mr. Leschio's exhibit, where he had, had it. It was a moving exhibit, and what I did here was capture this image of the illumination, and then if we can go to the next one, this is his overlay of the Merritt scanned truck over the the uh, truck from the from the video, and then here is the the latch that he's saying it, it lines up with, and he believes it's a reflection from that latch. Now let's go to the next one. <coughs> this is 1099. What are we looking at here? We are looking at the, the illumination on the side of the door. I mean, it's been superimposed because we made layers. And you can see it's not the same angle, it's not the same shape, it's not the same location as the latch. So. This, this uh, illumination, this light that I'm seeing, is more of a horizontal light as Direction opposed to... leading, sustained. What's the difference between the, the, uh, the light and the latch? The, la the light is horizontal, the latch is vertical. Okay. So even if this were a reflection, it wouldn't match, is that correct? Right. What are we looking at here? We're looking at a picture that was taken of the vehicle, the truck that Mr. Merritt used to own, and Mr. Liskio cropped this and enlarged it. Objection, Ms. Stitch's testimony. Sustained. Moved to strike. Uh, Excuse me, zoomed. This, the answer is stricken. I don't recall this photograph being utilized. Not with Mr. Liskio, by, not by Mr. Liskio. Okay. Was this part of Mr. Liskio's uh, presentation to the jury? No. It was part of his report. Okay. Um, so, did you rely on this to uh, aid you in your writing your report? I, I it deserved honorable mention because it was there. Okay. 
So but you, you, ne you never see that you never see any detail of this on the truck eventually <coughs> video. You don't see this hmm? area, this de detail. Okay. This and this is exhibit 1100. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, and this is exhibit, exhibit 1101. And again, this is, uh, was this part of Mr. Lissio's presentation to the jury? Yes. And what are we looking at here? We have the headlights of the vehicle from the Mitchley video. We have the reflection um, down below on the bumper. And then there's some ellipses that have been placed here around the, the glow of the headlights. And do, did Mr. Lissio explain the purpose of doing that? Well, he said he, he glued them on the front so that then he could transfer them to the, the uh, Merritt vehicle it's for comparison. Objection misstates his testimony. Sustained. Counsel strike. Approach. Counsel approach. Let me do it Thank you. You indicated that there's a uh, in, an ellipse drawn around a portion, it looks like, of the uh, headlights and the. Right, correct. So if you can just describe what we're looking at here. These are, these are the headlights from the vehicle in the Mitchley video. This is the reflection um, on the bumper beneath the lights. And this has been zoomed in on. So um, we see the artifacts from that enlargement process. Can I, can I uh, ask to, uh, I'm going to go back to exhibit um, 1089, OK? okay. And if you could just uh, keep that image in your in your head for a moment. And, and, and it looks like there's a really big glow area around the ellipses that are drawn there. Is that correct? Yes. OK. And this is, uh, uh, at least from what your understanding is, uh, a caption from the Mitchley video. Is that correct? Yes. OK. Is this also a caption from the Mitchley video that we looked at earlier, yes. Exhibit 1089? Yes. Okay, does this resemble in any way the glow pattern that you saw that Mr. Lissio showed to the jury and drew circles around? Objection misstates the testimony and makes the province of the jury. No. Explain, please. Well, we see the configuration and shape of the headlights here, and we see the reflection on the bumper. Uh, and the other one, it's just as round, like the highlights have been blown out. And what that means is, in every image there are highlights, which is the light portions, mid-tones, and then shadows. And you can adjust those to tweak a, an image. But when you over-adjust the highlights, you get what we call burnout. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back to that, okay? okay? And is that what we see here, burnout? That certainly is consistent with it. Now, is burnout something that naturally occurs, or does that have to be, uh, at least if you're looking at the prior image that we saw, is this something that would have to be created by the person who was putting this... Uh, together? It certainly appears so. This image has definitely been, been um, modified for whatever reason, um, and that's consistent with blow out of the highlights. So if I wanted to, let's say, show that there really isn't any running lights and it all kind of blends together, if I did a blowout, it would kind of 
put everything in kind of a glow, correct? Correct. What do we have here in Exhibit uh, 1102? Here we have the ellipses around the headlights of the model vehicle that used to belong to Mr. Merritt. Okay. And I know that they're much bigger than the actual headlights. Okay. So I'm going to go to the next exhibit, uh, 1103. This and what's is from Mr. Liskio's report. And we have, again, the ellipses around the Headlights, you know, so they're not burned out. You can see some, some edges, and then we have the reflection of the bumper. Okay. Now, that seems to be like almost a perfect fit for the ellipses that were drawn by Mr. Lissio, correct? Action, argumentative, assumes facts, not evidence. <laughs> Does it, I didn't understand the question. Does, does the ellipses that were drawn by Mr. Lissio appear to kind of fit what we're seeing here? Your Honor, I echo the court's objection at sidebar. It's improper question of this oh, expert. Oh, oh. And I, I still have, and you, you see these ellipses aren't, aren't the same. Okay. This one's more oval shaped and this one's more rounded and kind of off, off, lopsided. Okay, is there an, is there an issue with that or would that be normal I to just, do? I just noted, noted that okay. it's odd. Okay, now this is the... 11, ellipse. hold on, this is exhibit 1104. Yes. What are we looking at here? We are looking at the ellipses around the headlights of the model truck. And this one, obviously they're, they're much bigger than the actual headlight. Here's the actual headlight. And then this one, here's the actual headlight. But this one is off-center. And can you explain the significance of that? Well, if, if this is if these were supposed to be um, <coughs> coming from the headlights of the the same ellipses copied from the headlights of the of the truck and the Mitchley vehicle onto the model of the truck formerly belonged to Mr. Merritt. I'm going to object as a speculation since he said if supposed to be sustained. Move to strike his answer. The objection sustained. Uh, the last answer is stricken. Do you have an opinion as to whether or not this is a uh, that the uh, ellipses that are that are drawn here would be um, consistent with Mr. Merritt's uh, headlights? Let's go back. I'm going to go back. Yeah, please. Okay. More? No, this is fine. Okay. So we see them here. We see the shape of them here. Then go up. I can't hear you. Yes, so. we, we see them here. We see the shape of them here. Compare this this one with this one. Okay. And then go forward. And the shapes of the people, this one is okay, but this one is, is off. It's not consistent with the one in the Mitchley video of the truck. Okay. And what are we looking at here? We're looking at here, this is a three, the, from the scan, and it shows the back of the model truck that used to belong to Mr. Merritt. Now this is exhibit 1105. Yes. And the, the point of it, you never have a view of the truck from the Mitchley video like this. You never see this part of the, of the truck from the Mitchley video. And now, it's done for the purpose of Objection Sorry. calls for speculation as to purpose. Sustained. Move to strike any answer. No, of the answer is Let me ask you this. Is this does this uh, exhibit 1105 uh, depict any shadows? It does. I'm pointing to the, with a laser pointer now. Okay. And then there's a reference to an opal open metal box, is that correct? Yes. And an open metal box uh, causes the shadow. Correct. Okay, so do we ever see anything close to this? No. At all in the Mitchley video? No. Okay. Now we're going back to exhibit uh, 1089, and what are we looking at here? Okay, this is the Mitchley video. Um, this is the 
that we're in, this would be the shadows. Okay. And do you see shadows here? I see just, just very, very general shadows, but not with any particular detail. And where would that be? In this area here. Okay. <coughs> so nothing like we saw in the previous uh, exhibit? No. And this is exhibit 1106, and this looks like a uh, bird's eye view, is that correct? Yes, that is exactly right. Of the rear of the Ferro scanned uh, a truck formerly belonging to Mr. Merritt? Correct. Okay. And again, do you see shadows here? You do. And do you know how these shadows were created? In this one, I don't recall. In further ones, they were created... Uh, we'll get to those then. We'll get to those then. Okay. So in this one, do we see this level of detail in the Mitchley video? No. This is exhibit 1107? Yes. And a uh, slightly different uh, uh, angle, correct? Right, correct. And what are we looking at here? Mr. Listio has put outlines around various areas where he sees shadows. And again, uh, do we see this level of detail? Do we see the hitch uh, in the uh, uh, Mitchley video? We do not. This is a model that he created from the shadow. This is, hold on, this is exhibit 1108? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. This is a model, a 3D model that he created uh, it, from, from the scan. Was this from the previous, uh, a model based on the previous exhibit we just yes. saw? Yes, yes. Okay. Now this is, he's taking it further. This is exhibit 1109? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, he's taken it further and created another model in which you see shadows with great detail. Objection. Argumentative and misstates the testimony. Okay. Move to strike. No, the last answer is different. Do we see, we see shadows in this exhibit? Yes. And do we see, uh, again, the, the, uh, the ferrule scanned, <coughs> uh, recreated uh, uh, truck of Mr. Merritt, correct? Yes. And do we see anywhere near this level of detail in the Mitchley video? We do not. Exhibit 1110, <coughs> uh, what are we looking at here? We're looking at the shadows um, behind the Mitchley vehicle and from where I'm at, I, I, I can't see much of anything. It's pretty distorted. Okay. Because of the projection, I believe. And do you ever see the uh, vehicle in the Mitchley video, whatever vehicle that is, in this position? No, this, this shows more of the vehicle than you see in the Mitchley video um, at all. And this is exhibit 1111? Yes. It looks like a similar positioned, ferro scanned vehicle and something else there. Is that correct? Yes. What, is, what are we looking at here? It's an outline from his model that he created from the, the shadows from the 3D um, scan. And he placed them into this, but if you actually go back and forth, you don't actually see in shadows what you see in these lines. So you, I went back to one 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 zero, uh -huh. and, and then go back to one 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 one. Back and forth. So although it's drawn there uh, physically in exhibit one 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 one, you don't see it in the other exhibit. Is that correct? Correct. And then back to 1089 for shadows? Yes, yes. I believe this is, if I might just look at my report real quick. What was that again? This is exhibit 1089. Okay. Yes, this is um, from Mr. Liskeho's uh, frame 78 from the clip that he prepared. and. I put it in here because it's, it came from his video clip. Okay. And now the next one, which is, is there a next one? That's the next one. 
Okay. Oh, the next one? Yes. After yes. this one? Is that? Oh, so okay. that's, that's the last one. Okay. All right. So that, again, are you, is that to show the shadows or lack of detail yes, in the shadows? That, that's correct. Now, you reviewed uh, some materials in regards to your uh, testimony, is that correct? Yes. And what materials did you uh, rely on to go through your work? Well, I reviewed gigabytes worth of pictures that were taken, tests that were done by the Sheriff's Department. Um, um, work done by another expert, Lenny Rudin, that did work on the case. And who is who is uh, Dr. Lenny Rudin? Dr. Lenny Rudin is the founder and, <coughs> and president of Cosmic Tech Incorporated, a forensic video imaging company in Pasadena. And how was he associated with this case? Objection, relevance, since facts not in evidence. Sustained. Why did you review his material? Objection, relevance. Sustained. So, uh, and you reviewed some sheriff, uh, San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department uh, materials? Right. In fact, with the video that we watched in 2014 and the still images from 2014 were done by the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department, correct? Judging, correct. leading, over, <coughs> answering me. The side light that Mr. Lissio referred to as a reflection, do you know how San Bernardino the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department referred to that uh, in their experiments and their uh, work. Objection. Relevance, hearsay, and assumes facts, not evidence as to experiments. <coughs> Did you review the uh, report dealing with the creation of the video uh, that was done of Mr. Merritt's truck in 2014 uh, that, we've, that we've viewed? Yes. <coughs> and did that assist you in uh, strengthening you or weakening your opinion in regards to whether or not that is a light? Objection. Relevance. Calls for hearsay. Overruled. Answering me. You can answer. I said no. Okay. Were you able to determine from their work how they referred, how the Sheriff's Department referred to that uh, light uh, that Mr. Lissio referred to as a reflection. Objection calls for hearsay. <coughs> and your review of all the work done by the Sheriff's Department, other experts, whatever, did anyone refer to the light that we saw in this video as a reflection? Objection calls for hearsay, relevance. Sustained. How long have you been on this case? <laughs> Since 2016. 2016? Yes. Okay. And um, did you because I know it's going to be asked, so I'll just ask you, did you get paid for doing your work, or did you do it for free? No, I get paid for it. Okay. And do you have to bill for that? Yes, I do. Have you billed a certain amount? Yes, we have billed and, we have billed and received 22000 in three years. Okay. And have you done work for the, for the uh, prosecution in your uh, work as a forensic uh, analyst? Yes, yes, I have. Uh, when was the last time? I testified for the elected district attorney of Mendocino County two or three weeks ago. Okay. Three weeks ago now, I think. Okay. And you were retained on that case by by the by yes. that office? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And do you bill them as well? Yes. Okay. Um, and yesterday, I was pressed into service because my part relevance. Yesterday, I came to meet you. Is that correct? Yes. And you hadn't met really, uh, we had met, but you didn't really know me, did you? Objection, the relevance. last three years? Sustained. Had you met me before? Objection, relevance. Sustained. 
Mm. When I came to see you yesterday, did, was somebody with me, filming me? Yes. Did you ask to be interviewed or anything like that? I did not. They were there to film me, right? Correct. Okay, not you. Correct. But they happened to be there, right? Correct. Okay. Um, and you didn't ask for them to be there, did you? I did not. Okay. You didn't ask to be in any documentary, did you? I did not. Okay. Nothing further. Thank you. Cross. Your Honor, maybe we heard a sidebar as a discovery issue? Sure. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yourself? Not too bad. During this interview with Mr. Moline yesterday, was Mr. Moline asking you questions? I'm going to object, Your Honor, for product. I, I don't. No, no, wait. You don't need to answer. The objection sustained. With, did he ask investigative questions about Same the contents objection. of your report? Same objection. The, the objection sustained. Did you take notes of that? You want to have a 402 hearing? On that, at some point, we can do that, but that's not appropriate for the examination at this time. And you've had this case since 2016, yet your report is dated 4-19 of 19, is that correct? That, both of them. There's a, a primary report and then a supplemental report. Yeah, Mr. Lissio testified March 12th of 2019, is that correct? I don't the date, but... And what was the exact reason for you waiting three years and to provide that report on the eve of your testimony? Well, the, it was actually a communications glitch because I prepared the draft of the report and there was so much going on, so much new stuff that Mr. Merrick wanted me to I digest and analyze and respond to that. And the last one was Mr. Liskio, so I did, instead of incorporating it into the original report, I did a supplemental report. But you provided information for Mr. McGee to use in his opening statement, right? Uh -huh. Including the measurements of the uh, headlights and the uh, alleged side running light, correct? <coughs> I didn't know that. Well, you provided it, right? You may not have known it was used in opening statements, okay. but Objection. you provided it, correct? Objection argumentative. I provided, I provided him the draft of the report that would have that information in. Oh, okay. And when was that? I believe in November. And so what was the November reason? November of? Of last year. Okay. And so what was the reason you sat on that report until April of this year? Were you asked to sit I, on it? I didn't sit on it. I, I submitted it to him as a draft, and at his request, um, he wanted more information, more incorporated into it as it became available. And other than, rather than redoing the original report, I just did a supplemental. But your original report was done in November, and you failed to disclose it until April. Objection misstates his testimony. So I'm going to talk initially about, and I will use your exhibit 1089, I believe, which is the... Mitchley video clip, correct? Yes. Okay. So, let's see if I can get my computer to actually pause that. Pause. Let's see if it'll behave. <coughs> okay. I have it pulled up on the screen. Now, I want to ask you a couple questions. This is the physical printout of the screen captures for 1089 from this video, correct? Yes. How many pages is that screen captures that you've included in Exhibit 1089? I believe it's 13 pages. 14. 
17. 17. How many actual captures did you take from the video? I believe I did. I captured all of them. How many frames? I don't know. I don't have that. Is approximately 107 for, is it about the right number? I, I just, I don't know. I don't have it with me. Did you pe prepare Exhibit 1089 for use today? Yes. Okay, so why did you pick only 13 of 107 frames? Objection misstates the number. I'm sorry, why did you pick 17 of 107? It was, the, the purpose of these was to show the general um, <coughs> quality of the video as the truck moved through it. It wasn't intended to be a frame by frame of every frame that was included in the video. So, but most importantly, let's see if we're projecting again. I guess we're not for some reason. We are plugged in. It is a duplicate. Let's try this again. Jackson, we try a 24. I switched it over. They did switch, huh? Just leave it plugged in and we'll pull it up. Can oh. you pull up to the video? Yeah. Four again, Jackson. You want to take a short break, like five minutes or so? Um, yeah, one of the jurors wants to use the restroom. Well, there we go. <laughs> 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 uh, we'll take a short recess, Bob. Hopefully, they bought five minutes. Yeah, we'll be back in five minutes. Keep in mind the admonitions previously given to you, not the former. It's expressed in the opinion. It's not the discussion. Keep your comments to yourself. We'll see everyone back. Hopefully, in about five minutes. Yeah, we'll be back in five minutes. Yeah, we'll be back in five minutes. Yeah, we'll be back in five minutes. Yeah, we'll be back Look, we are back in session. There is a counselor present. All members who are here are open. It's present. The witness is back on the witness stand. You may have any other examinations, friends. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Stutchman, you would agree that a light that is illuminated by some type of bulb would stay would stay illuminated absent some mechanical defect, correct? Yes. And you would agree that that luminosity would stay constant based on the wattage of the bulb, correct? Correct. Absent some mechanical difficulty. Correct. Okay. And do you know what wattage of bulbs were in a Chevy truck in 2010 to illuminate the headlights such as those in Mr. Merritt's truck? I do not. Do you know which uh, wattage of bulb would have been in the running lights in 2010 for a truck such as Mr. Merrick's? I did not. You did no research into that? I did not. 
isn't it common that the wattage bulb in the running lights is going to be lower intensity than that of the headlights? Yes. And the reason for that is because the prominence is supposed to be the headlights when they're on, not the running lights, to alert other drivers, correct? Correct. And again, you would agree that the Mitchley video uh, is low quality, right? Yes. Low light, correct? Yes. It has contrasting light, correct? What are you referring to? Were you made aware of other light sources that are present in the Mitchley video? You can see the, there's, I believe, porch lights that, that are present in the video. Were you made aware that that porch light was turned on by Miss Mitch, Mitchley when she heard strange noises across from her house? I was not. <clears throat> Were you, or did you do any investigation as to other potential light sources in the neighborhood, including other porch lights, security lights, or street lights? Only what was available with the two videos that I, that I watched, channel, basically, and then channel seven. So you did no independent research to verify any other light sources? Correct. <clears throat> Were you provided <laughs> The Faro data for the neighborhood and uh, and the defendant's truck. Yes. Okay, because you did not include that in your report. Why is that? It really wasn't didn't have any bearing on my analysis. Is that because you don't know how to use the Faro data? No, because it was I had I was able to determine what the answers to my questions without that data. So, you pulled, I look back, it's actually 106 video stills. Is that about right from? It, it could be, I don't, I don't remember. 106, 107, that's close, right? Yeah, it could be, I'm, I'm not going to commit without knowing. But, but you only included 17 of those in Exhibit 1098, correct? Correct. So, as we flip through, and I have the video up here, and I have it slow, kind of frame by frame, and I'm going to advance it to where we first are able to see the what you're calling the side running light. You see that? I, uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. You see that? I, well, what you're talking about, I mean, this light right here? Correct. We're talking about the side, calling that the side light. You're calling it the side light. I How do you know that it actually is the side light? Because of the analysis that I've tested I to, to and show you the exhibits today. And you would agree that if it's the side light on that model truck, it should stay illuminated throughout the entire video, correct? To the to the extent that it's visible to the camera throughout the entire video. Well, it starts being visible at this frame, correct? Yes. Okay. Are you aware of a speed bump in front of the Mitchley residence? I am not. A pothole? No. Are you aware that it did, did look like the uh, vehicle drove up on the curb in any way? No. So it did not change the perspective of the truck as it was driving down the roadway, correct? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And you're not aware of any evidence of that from any of the other testimony or exhibits or anything? Correct. So it would be your assumption or reasonable conclusion that that light should remain constant since it's now in view of the camera and progresses in front of that camera, correct? Unless there's something that obscures it. Well, are you aware of anything in her driveway or her front lawn that would obscure the view of the vehicle as it passes or that light? I am not. Did you look at the Faro scan of the neighborhood to see if there was such an obstruction? I did, I did review the Faro scans, and I don't recall any obstruction. Okay. So as we progress to the next frame, where'd it go? It looks like it went behind the beam. Oh, but there's no speed bump there to raise the level of the truck, right? Correct, unless it's the angle of the truck. Oh, but you said angles don't matter. Objection misstates his testimony. Sustain this argument. Didn't you say right before the break at lunch that angles don't matter? I don't recall what you're talking about. <clears throat> Still not there, is it, after we advance the frame? I do not see it. Still not there, is it? I do not see it. That oh, 
it's back, right? After, right. what, three frames? I think so. How many of those frames where it was not visible did you include in Exhibit 1098? I do not know. Don't you believe it would be important to document the fact that that light disappears from the Mitchley video for four frames? That light was not the, the basis for preparing these. It was to give an overview of the video quality. However, you did spend, would you not agree, a good amount of your testimony, uh, one, assuming that that is the side running light on the truck. In, in frames that show that clearly in, in the progress of the video, that I did. And you spent a good amount of your direct testimony describing how that being the side running light is inconsistent with other evidence, correct? Could you repeat that question? I didn't. And you spent a majority or a lot of your direct testimony describing how that assumed side light was inconsistent with other evidence, correct? I don't know what other evidence you referred to. Well, you talked about the measurements of the headlight from the ground to the, the height of that side running light, right? Correct. We, you prepared exhibits such as... 1090 that had your, your little parallel lines Correct. with the heights, right? That's right. And you made a point to emphasize that that's, if that was the side running light, it was inconsistent with the height of the headlight, correct? It was inconsistent with being 60 inches above the ground. Well, because if it was 60 inches above the ground, you said it wouldn't be seen at all because the beam, the roof ceiling, or roof beam, porch beam, of the Mitchell video would have obscured it, correct? Correct. Yep, you're saying we see it here. That's not what I'm saying. You're saying that's the side running light, are you not? You are, you're talking about one thing and I'm referring to another. On the, the top of the box of the Merritt vehicle is a yeah. marker light. That's what I'm talking about. You're, I think, talking about the light on the side box down lower. Um, no, sir. You have referred to it multiple times as the side running light in your report and your testimony, correct? I, I may have. And what you're referring to is that stationary illuminated light that would be on the side of the box at 60 inches, correct? No, I was not what I was referring to. I was referring to the one on the side of the box at the same level height as the um, headlight. That is seen in the overlay video that I, or overlay exhibit that I did, and also in the channel seven, channel six comparison. I, I hate to do this, Mr. Jackson. Can we go over to overhead and hopefully not lose the video? This is ten ninety, correct? I'm doing my best to avoid the glare. You see that? <laughs> yes, but I don't know what number it is. Okay, I'm telling you it's Exhibit 1090. Okay. You created this, correct? Correct. And you put up the measurements of the headlights and the ground and the top of the headlights and the 60 inches, right? Correct. <laughs> and that 60 inches was meant to reflect where that side marker light or side running light is. Objection correct? misstates his testimony. On the top oh. of the box. Overruled. He, correct. He, that's what just, I'm referring to. Just <coughs> the, the objections overruled. He can state his answer to what he was referring to. Go ahead. I was referring to the side light on the top side of the box, on the passenger side. Correct. That's what I'm calling the running light. Okay. On this exhibit, 1090, you called it the side marker. Your Honor, right? correct. The counsel is asking about the wrong vehicle intentionally, so uh, that has to be clarified with this witness. Well, that's not an objection, so. Well, it, missta it misstates his testimony. Overruled. When you described exhibit 1090, the one we're looking at on the overhead, yes. You referenced 60 inches from the ground, correct? Correct. And that was to refer to what is listed as the side marker light or what has been being referred to as the side running light, correct? No. Object objection not as to this vehicle. That's not the reference he testified to, so it misstates his testimony. The, uh, so 
we've been talking about a vehicle that is shown in the Mitchley video, correct? Yes. And we've also been talking about a vehicle that was shown in the sheriff's office video of, I'm just going to call it Mr. Merritt's truck. Yes. Okay. And we've been talking about a vehicle that was a thorough scan of Mr. Merritt's truck. Correct. Which vehicle do these measurements refer to? These measurements refer to the actual vehicle as it was measured by C CSS Rice. Okay, so these are the vehicles that the sheriff saw, measurements of the vehicle that the sheriff saw that said that was Mr. Merritt's truck. Correct. Okay. And on that vehicle, the side light, side marker light is 60 inches. And when you say side marker light, explain what light you're referring to. On the back of the box, on the passenger side of the box, is a, is a red marker light that comes on when the headlights are on. You've probably seen them on trucks. Okay. So on Exhibit 1090, the 60 inches that you marked on there from the ground right. is meant to represent the side running light or marker light that was measured on the defendant's truck, correct? Correct. Thank you. <coughs> and you put that as would have been displayed, according to your measurements, inside the beam of the front porch of the Mitchley video if that was, in fact, the defendant's truck. Correct. That light would have been outside that beam because the beam obscures anything above it. And so your position is that if if we can go back to, or sorry, that if it was the defendant's truck, that side running light would have been obscured by this beam. Correct. Correct. Okay. If we can go back to attorney one, I believe this is. Isn't it true in your direct testimony multiple times you referred to this dot image of a light illumination as being that side marker light? Objection, Your Honor. It's, it misstates the testimony again. It's at that location, not at the location the counsel is referring to. Overall, we can, uh, what exhibit is this? This is uh, the Mitchley video. The stills is 1090. The Mitchley video is marked in... The 30s. I can pull it up shortly. Okay. So, the objections overruled. We can answer if the light that is shown in this particular still photograph from the Mitchell video, Exhibit 1090, is the uh, same rear light that you were referring to. No. no this one, you, as it progresses through, you can clearly see where it's at. And it's not that high. Okay, so you would agree that that illumination, whatever it is, is not the side running light, correct? Would not be consistent with the side running light on the defendant's truck, correct? Let's get our terms clear. You're talking about the light at the top of the box on the passenger side when you say running light? Yes. Okay. Marker light, running Marker light. Marker light, yes. Okay. Right. That, you're saying, cannot be that light because it would be inconsistent with the height of what is on the defendant's truck, correct? Correct. But you would still also agree that if that was a light illuminated by a bulb, it would stay constant, correct? Correct. And it would not disappear from the view of the camera unless there was some obstruction, correct? Either that or um, compression artifacts could do that too. <laughs> but in this case, I've shown you that it does disappear, correct? For four frames. Correct. And those are four frames you excluded from 1098 for your exhibit, correct? That wasn't the purpose of this, this exhibit. It was just a general overview. Well, but it's important to be precise and accurate when displaying evidence, correct? Correct. Did you not under, did you not believe? Well, very good. Did you not notice that the light disappeared? I saw, I saw the debris um, disappearance. When you created the exhibit, were you aware of that? Or are you just now being made aware of that? 
No, it, it, it didn't. It was not in my mind when I just did these reference samples of the video, of the images from that, that video. You would also agree that in the initial frame when it shows up, it is much brighter than it is here four frames later, correct? No, I don't believe so. It gets brighter as it gets closer to the camera. So it does, well, thank you for answering that. So it does change the level and intensity of the light in the image as it gets closer to the camera, correct? That's correct. That would also be getting closer to the front porch light on the Mitchley video, correct? The camera was on the front porch. And therefore, that change in aspect ratio between where the, whatever's causing that illumination and that front porch light changes could be the reason why it changes in its luminosity, correct? That's, that's, not, that's not what my analysis showed. Uh, but it's possible, though, isn't it? I, anything's possible, but it's not consistent with the evidence. Well, the evidence is that it changes luminosity, correct? Yep. Brightness, correct? It gets brighter. It, it also disappears, correct? Very briefly. Right? And it changes its position in relation to a front porch light that comes on, correct? That's also where the camera's at. But the camera is not going to cause the reflection or the illumination, right? The illumination, as it gets closer to the camera, would be more visible. Well, you would agree in, in this frame it's closer than it was originally, right? Yes. Okay. Let's get it to... Hold on, let's back it up. I'll repeat it here. You would agree that that's pretty bright, right? Right. And you would agree that it is brighter at that frame than it is four frames later, correct? Let's take a look. So it disappears yes. on the next frame, right? Right. Still gone on the next frame? Yes. Still gone on the next frame? Right? Yes. Or is that little pixelation right there a dim version of that light? Let's keep it going and follow that. Let's go one more. Oh. Yeah. And now that's brighter again, right? Yes, correct. And it's not as bright as the first frame, right? No. And it's a little bit brighter than if that artifact was the light in the previous frame, it's now brighter than that one, correct? Correct. So you would agree that it changes luminosity. It brightness. It, it changes brightness. That's correct. Okay. You did not note that in any of your reports, did you? I did not. <clears throat> now, you talked about the... Um, video that the Sheriff's Department did with the defendant's truck, right? The one we played? Yes. Yes. I think it was, uh, was that 795, I think, the exhibit number? I don't remember what it was. Okay. But you remember that, right? Yes. Do you know when that was taken? To believe it. I actually don't know when that was taken. So if I told you it was 2014, would that seem right? That would seem right. Okay, you would agree that that's approximately four years after the Mitchell video, correct? Yes. Do you know what kind of camera it was taken with? I do not. Do you know how far away the camera was from the truck? I do not. Did you notice, in fact, that it's in color? I actually didn't. You didn't notice that the running lights were orange and the headlights did, were white? I did. Yes, I did. That would be color, right? Right, yes. The Mitchell video is not in color, is it? No, it's not. It's in actually a... I'm going to use a loose term because I know it's not 100% accurate for home video or home security, but it's in night vision mode, right? It's in you know, a, a, a grayscale. Right. So that those home security cameras can see a little better at, dark, at night, right? Right. 
Okay. So in its grayscale night vision version, that's not color. No. And you would agree that in the graininess and quality of the Mitchley video, <coughs> that even the headlights show a lot of washout around them, correct? I have to see what you're referring to. Well, let's go to We'll look at the video again. We probably the easiest. You see right there in the initial frames where the headlights come in, they look quite round, right? Yes. <coughs> the headlights on the defendant's truck are not round, are they? No. So that would be washout, correct? Correct. And that's not something that someone intentionally adds to this. It naturally occurs, correct? Correct. And if you were to zoom in using any one of your fancy computer programs, it would pixelate, correct? It would. And it would show the glow, so to speak, of that washout, right? Correct. And even in this washout period, you can see a gap between the glare on the bumpers and the washout of that headlight, correct? Correct. Do you have any independent forensic evidence that that washout is not concealing <coughs> potentially dimmer running lights on that vehicle? Well, in making that kind of analysis, you need to look at more than one frame. You need to look at it. I understand that, but I'm talking about this frame right now. Do you have any independent... The can explain his answer. Go ahead, he can explain his answer. That is not the way we do it, to take just one frame. We want to get an overview of, of all we can, and so we can go through frame by frame after frame. You made a point on direct that there was a gap between the headlights and the, reflect and the glare on the bumper, correct? Yes. And you implied in that answer that that's where the running light should be, correct? Correct. However... Did you take into consideration the washout that would occur around the headlights as possibly obscuring a dimmer, uh, different colored bulb in those running lights? The running lights are wider and wrap around. That's not consistent with what we see even in this very poor frame. So you would agree, though, as you go through frame by frame, the shape changes, correct, of the headlights? As it gets, to, gets close to the camera. There, that would be a good one. Now you see the edges, of the, the square edges of the, or not a square, but of the headlights, and you see the glare. But you still have considerable washout around the headlight, correct? But down, down here, we have the, the, the glare. And then we have this blank space. You do not see anything remotely that looks like the wraparound driving light in the known vehicle. What color would those orangish, yellowish running lights on the defendant's truck appear to be in a grayscale, washed out, grainy video? They would just appear to be light. And not that, would not necessarily be distinguishable from headlights, would they? The size and the, the shape certainly would. But you notice that the size and shape of the headlights morph or change as it changes its relationship to the uh, camera, correct? And the closer it gets, the more that you see the, the, the true configuration of them. Okay. But the, you still get the washout, correct? Right. So. Mr. Jackson, do we have a, an actual physical pointer since the lasers don't work on there? No, a physical stick. Oh, do I have one of those? Oh, yes, you do. Yes, can you hand me that for <coughs> shut on the ground, please? And I'm going to do it on both the overhead screen if I can reach that high. Actually, give me the laser pointer for the screen if I can. <laughs> okay? You would agree that that right there is the glare, correct? Yes, correct. And then that's the headlight, correct? Correct. 
What is that gray bar right there in between That's the two? An empty space. You sure it's not a dimmer light? I am sure it's not the same shape as the as the driving lights either. Well, but you would agree they're washed out in a dimmer, correct? I'm sorry, what was your question? You would agree that those running lights would be dimmer, right, and washed out as well as the headlights, correct? Dimmer. It also wash out, right? No, but they're not, they're not bright enough to, to have the, the glare that we see here in the headlights. But you said on direct that there is nothing there, but now you're saying there's light there. No. I, don't, I do not see light there. I see... You I see, see a light gray a, rectangle, a, correct? A, a, a blank space under the headlights and then the glare. But that blank space you're referring to is a light gray in the pixels, is it not? Well, let's go to the next frame. I'm asking about this frame, sir. We can talk about the next frame in a minute. In this frame, do you see a gray rectangle of light? Well, as I look at both, both the headlights, there's absolutely not on the right side. There's something, but it's hard to tell what it is, but it's certainly not the shape of the driving light in the Merritt vehicle. So this rectangle right there above the glare and between the lights and below the lights, that's not light, that's nothing? Can we go to the next frame? We I'm asking about this frame. Do you see that? And are you saying it is nothing? I, I'm saying it's not the driving light that we see in the Merritt vehicle. Are you aware of any maker model of any car in 2010 that did not have some form of running light on the front end of the car? I am not a mechanical expert or a vehicle lighting expert, so I can't. Do you see it. objection relevant, John? The objection as to relevance is overruled. The last answer remains. Do you see anything in the Mitchley video that is consistent with any running light anywhere on the front end of that vehicle? No. So you're telling me that in 2010 there was a vehicle that existed that had zero running lights on the front? That's what it's consistent with. Despite being required by the Federal Trade Commission. Objection Committee. assumes facts not in evidence. Objection sustained. Did you investigate whether there is actually any vehicle ever made that does not have any type of running light on the front? Objection relevance. I did not. In your common sense, every day driving around the world <laughs> in the United States, have you ever seen a vehicle that does not have Objection some type of running light? Objection argument is sustained. I'm sorry. Maybe that was tone. Have you ever observed a vehicle in your experience that does not have a running light or running light turn signal combination on the front end of the vehicle? I don't recall. Okay. And on that note, uh, it's after 4.15, so we'll go ahead and take our uh, evening recess. Uh, today, I understand you can't be here tomorrow. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a flight out. I can you be here Monday? I, I'm coming from Na from Napa. I understand. Bring wine when you come back. I will provide the travel suitcase, Your Honor. We we all need a lot to go down. Wait. That may be the only thing we all unanimously do. Um, okay. Is there a day next week that you can be back? Can I get my iPad? Sure. Yeah. Right. Sure. Well, we're figuring that out, Your Honor. Can we just excuse the jury not to delay their departure? Uh, sure. We'll do. We'll. Will we have another witness for tomorrow? Yes. All right. So we'll be in recess until 9:30 tomorrow morning. Keep in mind the admonitions previously given to you, not to form or express an opinion about the case, not to discuss the case, or allow anyone to discuss the case with you. Again, that means not discussing anything about the case, any of the witnesses, testimony, exhibits parties or attorneys, and we'll let you know what day to bring your wine glasses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, me, let me address uh, two, a couple of things that were asked by uh, jurors. One juror has a date in May that they need to be off, and we'll work with that. 
Hopefully you'll be deliberating by then, uh, which kind of dovetails with the other question. <coughs> Please share information on current anticipated dates for end of witness testimony, closing arguments, start of jury deliberations. Uh, I don't have a clue. Every time I've tried to estimate it and talk with the attorneys, I've been wrong. So uh, I would say probably sooner rather than later. I'm hoping either the last week in April or perhaps the first week in May. Uh, but as I say, uh, I've been wrong. I don't want to discuss that with the attorneys and give you that information. It turns out not to be correct. So. Uh, Oh, good question. Also, what are the rules for availability of alternate jurors during deliberations? Uh, the alternates don't get to go into deliberations, so we let you go ahead and go back home, go about your business. Uh, we just need to make sure we have a good phone number where we can reach you. And uh, if you want to be here when, when the jury says we've reached a verdict one way or the other, or whatever they're going to do, it's always takes some time for us to assemble everyone. So it's time for you to be here. Uh, otherwise, if you can't be here, we will call you and let you know what the verdict is. If the verdict is a verdict, that means we would continue to the next phase, then we would tell you that and tell you what date we're going to start. If the verdict is we're not going to the next phase, then we will tell you that. Okay? And I'll go over that in more detail with you when we, when we reach uh, send the jury out to begin their deliberations. So Is that another question? Yeah. If I have a date in May that I need off, do I tell you now or you want me to wait? Uh, let's wait okay. and hopefully you'll be deliberating. I haven't used any dates. We're way past where we told you we would be, and so we will so definitely, we're, we're, we're working with everyone. And her dates, pardon my we're, dates. we're the same date that we both need, but if we're already deliberating, does that mean like, we can't have a day off no, at that point? you can still have a day off. Oh, okay, that was my question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have an issue. If I do two days, I'm a football coach, and June 3rd, I do two days. And I, there's no other... Uh, don't, don't, don't say June. No, don't say June. Don't even talk about June. We're not, we're not dealing with I'm, I'm, I'm sorry over here. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay, if, we, if, we get, if we get to a second phase... <laughs> Depending on how long the jury's out deliberating, then maybe that will become an issue and we'll work around it. Okay. okay. No problem. All right, we'll see you all back tomorrow. I just uh, text to get an update, so hopefully uh, I'll get one soon. I, I received a message from his doctor. Okay. That said, tell him to come down. <laughs> so you can pass that I, on. I will. I will. Your Honor, I, I have something to put on the record for you. It's not litigious. Okay. Um, the record reflect all uh, parties and counsel are still present. Jurors are not yet. Uh, the jurors are at left. Uh, yes. Before the break, um, for the technical difficulties, uh, alternate number three, apparently hearing my incessant cough, which I'm trying to stifle. Plop some uh, cough drops on my table as he walked out. Uh, I handed them to Deputy Jackson, Drew, and Craig, and asked him to tell them to th thank him, and I have my own. So now you have a close personal relationship with that all. No, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. I appreciate you uh, mentioning that. And additionally, we had lined up at Mr. McGee's request uh, four officers for tomorrow, and I don't know if they're still needed or what's happening. Or the subject of their testimony, they'd like to know so they could be prepared to expedite the proceedings. If Mr. Molina or Mr. McGee could text counsel to let them know that number one, they're needed, and number two, uh, what they might be testifying about so they could review that. And speaking with Mr. McGee yesterday, he said he's off for two days, so 48 hours. Well, hopefully that meant yesterday and today, not today and tomorrow. He said 48 hours, so that would happen. <laughs> Okay. That's actually what I was trying to declare. Um, who, who, uh, do you mind if I ask? Mark Hanky Bachman Steers. Bachman Steers, Hanky. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hanky, 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 Mr.
you were going to have a did, segment you, you wanted. <coughs> but I, all I did was take, because I don't know what you guys want out or whatever, so I took out the polygraph stuff. That's what I took out. So if there's other portions, I imagine there are. This is on the record. Yeah, but we're going to need to be heard early in the morning because. Yeah. So, but we don't have to do I mean, that's, that's with uh, that's Bachman or. Hard. We can do that with Bachman or Hanky if we want. So. It's well, the let's, three, as of now, session. let's have those witnesses here uh, rather than not. And then if they have a different witness, so be it. If we need to address something, we can address oh. it. Did you have a different witness in mind, Raj, when you said you had a witness for tomorrow? Yeah, we have two. Uh, we have two witnesses tomorrow. Uh, one is uh, Dr. Um, Wooden, and we have uh, Joshua Villanueva from from uh, Walker Street Mill. Okay, so yeah, we're going to be heard in the morning because Dr. Rudin creates some litigious issues, and there's a discovery issue as to. This Mr. Villanueva, I believe. No, it's, it's just the reports that are in the. Okay. Uh, nine o'clock. Council and parties be here at nine o'clock tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's just the meeting. There's no new interview. There's no nothing. There's just a there's statements in the in the reports. Okay.